Welcome, traveler. Come before developers roam this channel and nerf four nodes of power. Let me show you the most OP builds that will etch your name into the ladder for all of eternity. The gods will feel our wrath. Hey everybody, it's Boardman21, and today we have two builds for you that are basically the same, but they'll be using different weapons. One is going to be a Holy Coffee's um, 616 wave push build, um, which I can't show you gameplay of, but we're going to go over it, and then using the same skills and mostly the same items, I'm going to show you my version of it, doing the skill trees just a little bit differently so that we can put out some extra DPS. Um, I have not had time to completely min-max this build, so we're not going to get quite the high ward retention that Holy Coffee was getting on his. Ours is obviously not going to push to 616, but it'll give you a general idea of how the build works, and then once you can see how it works, we can talk about Holy Coffee's build, and you'll know exactly what to do if you want to try and push that high. So first up we got the skills. The five skills you're going to be running is Enchant Weapon, Ice Ward, Focus, Flame Ward, and Shattering Strike. With Enchant Weapon, what you're going to go for is four points in Concentration, one point in Desperation, two points in Shivering Blade, three points in Frost Brand, four points in Icicle Strike, and one point in To the Bone, with five points in Celerity for increased melee attack speed. Second, we have Ice Ward. An Ice Ward, you're going for the Ward Retention, so four points in Eternal Ward, one point in Waves of Frost, five points in Swirling Barrier to give you some Ward Regen, one point in Frozen Aegis, two points in Expansive Aegis, two points in Defender of the Elm, and two points in mind block although this block doesn't give you very much block chance what it does do is when you do get a block you get 20 ward on that block and since we're ward stacking this helps for focus we're running five points in mana regen per missing mana so desperate meditation four points in mana flooded one point in energy battery and then since we're a ward build obviously we're putting five points in ever ward and five point in mind shield for Flame Ward, we're running 3 points in Stalwart Defense, 3 points in Desperate Defense, because this gives a percentage of missing health granted as Ward, and since we're running the chest piece that takes your health to Grant Ward, you'll be missing a lot of your health, so this grants a crap load of Ward. 3 points in Fuel of the Flames, 1 point in Invigorate, and 4 points in Dilation for the duration, 2 points in Energize for Ward per second, and 4 points in Recolation for ward retention and then the most important skill shatter strike there are a lot of different ways to do this but the way that i am running it is going to be two points in lingering chill one point in breath of cold which are just the minimum requirements so that you can get two points in whiteout for the recast then we're running one point in icy flow two points in frostbitten four points in razor ice and importantly one point in chill flame which takes all the ignite stacks on an enemy and turns it into a frostbite stack which still leaves the ignite on the enemy so this is a very important skill because this is where a lot of the damage comes from we also have two points in solidify one point in frozen strap and three points in frigid efficacy and the reason we went with the ice spikes was just because it was a cooler effect it cleans up trash mobs decently while you're attacking a boss and it's just um, the hits of it do apply ignite so it's just another way to get ignite on the enemies if you don't want to run the ice specs i would recommend putting the five points into attack speed or you could put three more points into mana efficiency or you can even do the increased area which is things we didn't run but it is pretty much a requirement to get the frostbite effect increase and to get the ignite into frostbite when we attack this is where a lot of the damage over time will come from for passives our 20 points in Mage Base class is going to be 8 points in Arcanist, 8 points in Scholar, 1 point in Reactive Ward, 5 points in Warden, and 5 points in Mage Flurry with 8 points in Knowledge of Destruction. We have 0 points in Sorcerer. If you want, you can put points into this so that you can get up to Wisdom and put 10 points in that for 10 more int and some more mana. For Spellblade, we have 8 points in Arcane Warden, 8 points in Infused Weapon, 3 points in Latent Infusion, 
5 points in Spellweaver, 8 points in Prismatic Blade, 1 point in Shiver Armor, 2 points in Arcane Forge, and our Major Damage Dealer, 10 points in Flame Tender for a 120% increased damage over time, 8 points in Triple Strike for the Int and Melee uh, Cold Damage, and then Mind Slayer, which we'll put more points into it as we go along, but this gives us a 10% chance to gain 50 ward on kill. We also, once we get 5 points into Mind Flame, we'll get 5 times our intelligence as ward, and the intelligence we're running right now is 50, 52 intelligence, so 2 times that's 104 ward, so we have a 10% chance right now to get a 154 ward on kill. Once you get the five points in that, you can see how you know you're up to about almost 350 ward per kill. For items, items are going to be hard to find, mostly on the idle aspect. But you're going to try and run as much health as possible. One thing that we're not doing right now is we're not running the shield with increased health and flat health. Which, if we throw that on, you can see our health jumps up to 1800, but our ward, where we're just sitting, actually is going down. And that's because with a catalyst, you can actually get a massive amount of intelligence and a massive amount of ward per second. And then the other thing that you get, even though it doesn't come with increased health, is you get cold damage and damage over time. You can see ours has T1s on it and just one T4, so we're not getting a huge amount of boost from it. But you can see our ward does sit higher with it, so we're currently running it instead. Basically what you're going for is set health and health and int on everything. So anything that can have health or anything that can have int, you're putting as much of it on as possible. As you can see, we're also not running max now. We got vitality on some spots. So as you can see, yeah, just basically int, health, and increased health wherever you can get it. The belt, we're running Ignite Chance for 4 seconds on potion use, which is huge because we're also running the Eye of Rain for Ignite Chance. So when we use a potion, we're actually just over 400% Ignite Chance on melee hit, which gives us just a huge amount of stacks of Ignite. And then to top that off, we're turning that Ignite into Frostbite, which is doing cold damage over time, and we have increased cold damage. So it's just a huge stacking damage over time. It's not the hardest hitters in the game, but it does way more damage than if you were just straight hitting with Shatter Strike. And then you will also need Exanguius, the chest piece, so that you have a massive amount of wards stacked. As you can see, we're sitting at 4444 to 4445 ward per second, which um, quad fours, I just felt like that was a good point to do the video on. Um, Holy Coffee's build sits at about 14,000 ward just sitting here, and the reason why is because of these idols. The increased ward retention that you can get on 1x1s and on the larger ones up to 50% ward retention is multiplicative. So if you look at our ward retention, we're sitting at 448, which isn't that much compared to Coffee, who is sitting at 1,257%, which is an absolute crazy amount of ward retention. If you want to push to wave 600 plus as he did, you're going to need A, a lot of time, B, to farm all of these items, and C, you're going to need above 1,000% ward retention so that you can survive survive the huge hits that come with it. But with that being said, if we take off this 10%, you don't just we ended up going to 417 from 448, so we lost 31% from a 10% idol. So you can see how those are multiplicative and they are very useful. We don't have enough of them to fill up our inventory. So instead, in the spots that we don't have one, we have a percentage chance to apply frostbite with cold skills which our Shatter Strike does. We also have um, increased mana, and then we have four ward gained on melee hit. And speaking of melee on hit, the reason that Holy Coffee's build did so well and why running this Eye of Rain probably won't do anywhere near the same amount is because he was running the Humming Bee. Yes, you heard that right. The Humming Bee went to wave 616. The reason for that is the Humming Bee gives you a percent increase of elemental damage um, per 250 ward, and he was stacking 25 to 50,000 ward, so a massive increase in elemental damage, which he didn't do a whole lot of damage but the thing that he did get was the 1% increased movement speed per 250 ward so that's 40% more speed per 10,000 ward and as you can imagine getting 50,000 ward consistently like he was having here and there meant that he had 200% movement speed increase which allowed him to outrun everything around him so when he did take some hits he could just run away have his ward regen and then he could go right back into the battle so if you really want to push a 616 you're going to do less damage but you're going to want the humming bee you're not going to want the eye of rain 
And with that, let's get into some gameplay. Now some things about this build to notice, it is not a face smashing build. So a lot of builds that I like to play, especially on the Primalist or Sentinel, is face smashing, really getting in on the mobs. That's not going to work in this build. You are going to take massive amounts of hits. So the one thing that you really want to focus on is being able to keep an eye on your ward while you do this and run away whenever you notice your ward dip below your usual consistent amount that you're yet. So again, you can just run away and as you run you're automatically going to get more ward because your Xinguius is going to refill it. So just make sure that you are kiting as well as you can, otherwise you try and face smash you're going to end up dead. Now, like I said before, Holy Coffee, when he did his push, he was kiting the mobs a lot. He was doing less damage than we're doing here, but he was able to run away and within a few seconds would be able to regen, you know, his 15 to 25,000 ward, and then he could go back into battle. With that being said, some of his waves against bosses, he said, were taking from 10 to 20 minutes. Yeah, I didn't ask him his specific time, but I would assume for 616 waves, he probably spent a good 7 or 8 hours in there. Anyways, here's some gameplay, and as you can see, um, it's just uh, kind of a colorful little mix. So, have fun, put your own little spin on it, and... Hopefully this gave you enough of a base idea on how to stack enough ward and uh, how to do enough damage to kind of make it viable so that you can go pretty far.